It's meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Sunday mountain weather update. I want to start in Colorado where we still have a little bit of residual snow coming down. This is Steamboat Ski Area in the Northern Mountains reporting three, four inches of new snow and you might still pick up another half an inch to an inch of accumulation, but this is that this is the front that's actually weakening and diminishing, and a lot of the energy is, is going west into that area of low pressure in California. It's sort of yanking all the moisture out um, from the Intermountain West. Let me take into Utah. So this is a Solitude, the Snow State Camera, reporting uh, a little bit of new snow. And there's still some very light snow coming down, but again, all of this should be diminishing, and it's all residual just this morning. Let me show you what radar looks like across the west. So here's your wide view, and you can see just a little bit of tiny blue across Colorado. I'll take you into Colorado here in a second, streaking uh, into Nevada, and then in California. That's where the action is developing. Look at this. This is exactly what we need. I mean, we need rain. We need moisture. We need an onshore flow. We need higher humidities, and that's what we're getting in Los Angeles and across a lot of the fires. And this is going to be snow in some of the higher uh, foothills and mountains above 4,000 feet. Um, so we're going to see that. Big Bear all the way up to Mammoth. A lot of the 14ers are going to get snow. Back here in Colorado, we've got just some tiny bits of blue. It's always hard for the radar to pick that up uh, over the central and northern mountains. But again, some light residual snow this morning. All right, let me give you the lay of the land. This is water vapor satellite imagery, low level. So on this, your oranges and reds are your drier air. The whites and the blues... That's going to be your moisture. Let me just mark the uh, the area of low pressure. So that's what's really going to be the center of attention as it sinks to the south and it sits here and it's going to take its sweet time and then eventually it's going to roll towards the four corners and then through Arizona, New Mexico and then out. But as it does, as it rolls into this preferred position, the Albuquerque low position, it may spin up into a stronger area of low pressure and have a wide ranging effect from parts of southern Colorado uh, through all of New Mexico uh, and drop heavy snow as it rolls through Arizona. So it's going to be very interesting. And there may even be snow through the panhandle of Texas, Amarillo, and west Texas as well. So there's a lot to this thing. And then look at this. you got a big area of low pressure back here. You can see the amplification uh, with the flow. As we go into the first week of February, it is still looking active. I mentioned that yesterday. We'll talk a little bit more about it today uh, in the forecast. All right, here are my bullet points this morning. So um, residual snow um, this morning across a lot of Colorado, just this morning. Then the front's diminishing. It's all going to move to the west. The California low will take over. We're seeing that happen. Then it becomes a four corners low. And an active early February pattern is in the books. In fact, you can see it in the timeline here. Best odds of snow for the Big Sky area, Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Interior, BC, Tahoe, and the Northeast. So for Big Sky, you got light snow on 2-1, then moderate to heavy accumulation uh, with the flow as it shifts. A lot of jet support will have at least one or two storm systems. 2-2-2-3 two, 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 could be heavy. Wasatch, 2-1 light, moderate to heavy on 2-2. Tetons, 2-1-2-2, heavy accumulation potential. Colorado, um, while you may have some light residual snow this morning, the next best shot is not until the afternoon of 2-1 into 2-2, and it looks moderate to heavy. Interior BC, long waiting game. Long waiting game, but eventually, 131 into 2-1, you've got heavy snow accumulation coming. Tahoe, very similar. It's a waiting game, but when it hits, it's going to be there. Um, and then in the northeast, you've got light, light, and then potentially moderate 129 and heavy on 2-2. Um, some impressive totals in the northeast uh, coming up, so we'll look at those. I want to show you what the forecast accumulation is going to look like um, over time. So we'll start it at lunchtime today. Um, and the light blues, when you see the light blues on this chart, that's under three inches. You can see that on the legend. Once you pop into the greens, that's three to six. And once you, if you were to see yellows, that's over six. So you've got some light residual snow through lunch today over Colorado. But most of the action is moving into California with that area of low pressure. All right, here we are by late today. There's early on Monday. Look at Southern California continuing to get precipitation. Places in Southern California could see over an inch of liquid out of this. Um, okay, here we are by late on Monday. Look at that storm system um, kind of rolling through the Great Lakes and, and producing a little bit of lake effect as well. Here comes our low into Arizona. Snow Bowl should get 
several inches. I've got some pretty heavy accumes in there. Um, here's early Tuesday. Look at the snow in the northeast. Look at the low hitting the four quarters in the southwest. So this is lunchtime Tuesday. Here's late Tuesday. Some snow through southwest Colorado. Another clipper coming down out of uh, the northern plains and, and parts of Canada. Clippers are just fast moving, tiny, uh, fast moving low pressures that tend to drop light to moderate accumulations. But that's running through the northeast. All right, here we go early Wednesday. That snow continues in the northeast with the clipper. Uh, here we are by afternoon. Now watch what happens. This is Wednesday, late on Wednesday. Look at the low beginning to develop in Arizona and southern Colorado, heading towards the panhandles. And this model blows it up into a much stronger area of low pressure. This is late on Thursday, the 30th. Look at the impacts, heavy snow potential in southern Colorado. And this actually pushes some of the snow up towards the springs, Colorado Springs, and also the Denver Metro. Certainly Pueblo's in on that action. Um, and look how far north that does go. Here's early on Friday the 31st, so we'll have to see how that plays out. Now, look at the Pacific Northwest. This is the start of what's going to be a very active pattern. Heavy snow returns. B.C., Pacific Northwest, late in the month and into the first week. Let me take you. Here's the first day of February. Look at all the snow in the Pacific Northwest. Here's late on February 1st. All the snow's diving south. Look at that into Utah, into Wyoming, into Idaho, into Montana, the Pacific Northwest, BC, and eventually it'll roll into Colorado. All right, let me show you how this plays out with the jet stream. And this is really impressive. So jet stream, jet level winds at about 30,000 feet in the atmosphere. What I'm looking for here are the stronger winds, the, the reds, the oranges, the purples, the tans. That's going to be your stronger winds, the steering winds that steer these storms around. Um, so, okay, we'll start this at lunchtime today. You can see the big dip in the jet, the big trough over the west, the low in California beginning to take the energy and grow. Here's late today. All right, here's early Monday. There's late Monday. The low is on the move. Um, here is late Tuesday. Here is late Wednesday. Now the low is approaching the four corners through Arizona, New Mexico, southwest Colorado, southern Utah. All places should get snow. Here we are by early on Thursday, the 30th. Here is late Thursday. The low is setting up in that preferred position. We'll have to see how much it strengthens, how much it blossoms, and then it begins to move out into the plains where it could have uh, could have thunderstorms and also snow depending on the side of the low you're on. Um, here we are by late on the 31st. Now you can already see the big jet streak coming in to the west coast. That's what's going to start the snow production in the Pacific Northwest. Here we are by lunchtime on Saturday, Saturday, February 1st. Um, watch the jet dive in. Look at that, uh, that jet streak sitting across the west, that, that, that core of stronger winds. That's escorting in moisture, escorting in a storm systems and energy and helping to provide some lift. There's late February 1st. Here's early Sunday, February 2nd. All right, there's lunch. There's, there's late on the 2nd. Uh, and here we are on uh, lunchtime on the 3rd, late on the 3rd. So there is an absolute pattern shift by the time we get into the first week of February. All right, here are my numbers. So all of today through the 2nd of February, we'll start in the Wasatch, and I've got 6 to 10 inches of accumulation. I've also got 10 down in Bryan Head, and I've got 16 for Snowball because of that uh, southern track low. Uh, up in the Tetons, I've got 10s through Grand Targhee and Jackson Hole. I've got 6s up there, Big Sky, Brundage, Discovery, um, Snow Bowl. I've got 8 up there at Whitefish, a foot for Schweitzer, a foot for Red Mountain. Uh, and pretty good numbers through Interior BC, anywhere from 10 to 12 there, basically, through Revelstoke, Kicking Horse, and Red Mountain, less as you drop down in, but still 3 to 6 through BAMP up to... Uh, uh, Marmot, Mate, Marmot Basin. Pacific Northwest, you start to uh, get back in the big snows, 10 to 20 inches, basically 1 to 2 feet, from Whistler all the way through Baker, Crystal, Rainier, dropping down into Timberline and Bachelor, looking good. Um, in the Sierra, anywhere from 6 to 12, from Mammoth up towards uh, Tahoe, and over a foot there for Shasta. Now in Colorado, uh, you see the big numbers in southern Colorado. That's from that area of low pressure that comes in from the four corners. Uh, and a foot of snow possible through Taos and Ski Santa Fe, Angel Fire, Cuchara, Wolf Creek. We'll have to see how much snow makes it into southwest Colorado, into the San Juans, but I've got six to eight there. Um, and I've got generally five to eight inches through the central and northern mountains of Colorado through that time frame. 
All right, in the Northeast, the numbers look good all of today through the second, looking at generally 4 to 12 inches. But the big numbers are in Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, and certainly in New York around the those lake effect areas like Snow Ridge. I'm going over a foot of accumulation through Snow Ridge. Whiteface 10, uh, a lot of 10s up there through Kellington, Sugarbush, Stowe, and a bit more over Jay Peak and Mount Washington. All right, we'll end on the big western map here. And again, uh, this is going to be great. I mean, we have um, that active first week of February. And again, you can see the timeline starting roughly on the 1st. We'll start to bring in some bigger snows um, through a lot of the Intermountain West. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this morning mountain weather update. I always appreciate you guys tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.